Okay, so this is a way that you can automate your drawings in Revit um, and you can have multiple Revit projects uh, in the same Revit file. So first thing we're going to start here is we need to build a dashboard. A project dashboard allows you to uh, navigate your project uh, and uh, also allows you to control. Um, a lot of people don't know this. It allows you to control your presentation in the background as well. Um, if you do things kind of a specific way, and I'll show you how to do all of that. This is the dashboard I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on building uh, in this video. And you can see I have these three sheets which kind of show some basic drawings. And the cool thing is that you can uh, put all of these projects on different design options. So um, I'll change this to uh, a different project, a different design option, and you can see in uh, the dashboard as well as the presentation we have these sheets that kind of automatically update it. So a lot of times you'll have projects of different scale obviously so what if we have you know a project that's kind of a little bit smaller um, if we have the right kind of view template here um, we can take this change the scale of it in here uh, and then this one you only have to change the scale of it in two places and it'll update it everywhere else in your document. So in the 11 by 17 uh, design, sometimes you have to adjust, just do that. Um, and sections, everything should be good. It looks at a good scale and we can control all of that through here. Uh, not only that, but uh, we can work in the 3D view and in the plan view, um, you can do this trick where uh, the plan view is actually a section view that's rotated. Uh, and I do this so that you can, if you want to work on a specific floor, you can simply drag that up and you'll be at that floor in here. So let's get started. I'll show you uh, how to do this. First thing, I'm going to create a new sheet, uh, which requires me to be in the main model here. Uh, first of all, let me change this back. Uh, I think we need to be at 200. Yeah. So in these two view templates, um, I want these to be just like that. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to create a new sheet. And I have this title block that I'm going to select. And all this title block is is sized a specific way. Um, let me show you in the families here this is my 11 by 17 title block it's sized so that you know when you're putting a drawing here it fits and if the drawing fits inside that box it'll fit on this 11 by 17 same with over here that's why this is set up that way so now we have this view first thing we're gonna grab our default 3d view um, if I were to highlight it it's just this down here Okay, um, that looks good. It's at the right scale. Um, so this is just the you know, main 3D view that you're going to be working in. Next, we want to create a floor plan of this. So uh, you go up to view, plan views, floor plan. Um, sometimes you have to uncheck this and just do the first floor plan and hit OK. So I've got um, one of these already kind of done here. And you can see here we go. So don't worry about changing the scale of this or any of that. Uh, first thing we can do is we can just, um, yeah, we want to grab these two sections uh, and we want to make two sections. Cool. Uh, I'm going to take both of these, turn off the crop because we don't want to use any, we're trying to achieve speed here and we don't want to have to go and worry about view cropping or anything like that. We want the entire thing to show up because um, we're doing a site plan. We're going to do the, the whole zoomed out thing. We're going to analyze this whole site. Uh, and we want to make sure these sections are all the way at uh, high at scales, coarser than 400. Otherwise, they'll disappear. You won't, you won't know what happened to them. Um, and we're also going to add a view template here so that they are connected to each other. First thing is to go to our sections examples and bring both of these in great so we have now 
sections. We have two sections, cross sections through the site, uh, and you know they're going to fit nice on these sheets at the right scale. And here's what we're going to do: is we're going to get rid of this floor plan, and instead, here's where the the real fun uh, thing is: you can actually copy rotate this 90 degrees, and that will give you a section cut that is actually cut like a floor plan. Uh, and the cool thing is like I showed you before, this allows you to change your uh, where your floor plan is cut from. Um, so this is over here. Great. So this is actually our floor. So you'll notice as I'm placing these views on here, there's an arrow sitting here. And I'll show you uh, what the deal is with that in a bit. Uh, first, I'm going to pop these in. So, so now we have a way that we can navigate uh, our plan view. We can work and look in section, and we can work and look in our 3D view as well. So next thing that we want to do um, is create three sheets, three presentation sheets, so I can show you how to link these views back to the presentation. Um, so we're going to go new sheet and this time we're going to go typical horizontal 11 by 17 sheet. There we go. I'm going to do two more of these. Cool. So for the first one we, we're going to want a floor plan. Uh, so what we want to do is this section 3 here is the, is the, is the section cut. I'm going to duplicate as a dependent. So what's that going to do? That's you know, we're going to uncheck both of these and make sure the view template here is set to the one that we want. It's now the same view template as the other, so the scale will change with it. And so on this sheet, we will drag this on here. Great, somewhere, somewhere around there. So it's kind of like the the, the drawing is on the left, and you know we'll have some data on the right. So the second uh, thing that we want to do is this is the second sheet we want to have the 3D view um, I'm gonna duplicate the 3D view from um, the one that we placed here is gonna be on this sheet there we go make sure that this is also the same view template uh, example 3D there we go so now that that is linked and on this one, we will grab uh, a couple of duplicates, uh, dependent duplicates of those first few sections that we that we had. So do this again. There we go. And so these have the right view template on them already. I right, close out. So section one, we'll put it up here. Section two, we'll put down here. And these are already the right scale because we controlled that from the dashboard view. We'll put them somewhere around here. So, okay, uncheck these guys. So you're probably wondering what's the deal with these with these arrows, right? So here's the thing: um, if we change the scale of these drawings right now. In these in this presentation view and including uh, in this dashboard view, the the drawings are going to scale not from a central location. They're going to scale from a bottom right point, which is right here where this arrow uh, is pointing. So watch when I change the scale of this. Well, first of all, we need to make this just make sure that your views have the right templates on them so that this whole process works. Example 3D. So. If we change the scale of this, watch watch carefully here. From 200, let's say down to 80, and apply. See how it pops up and to the right? Uh, that's not what we want. Uh, we want it to scale um, like from the central point, uh, so that it, we can predict where things are going to move. Because uh, if I, okay, so let's actually follow through with that scale change, 80, okay it gets a lot bigger. Now if I go to my let's 
see. If I go here, you see how this came up into the right, and then if it, if we shrunk it down, it'd go down into the left. So it would it would never quite look right, even if we uh, made this model smaller. It would never quite sit in this in the correct spot on this sheet. And this is why people. This is one of the things that makes it so people don't try to automate their um, you know their sheets. Uh, with things already there and working subtractively rather than additively and already having a bunch of sheets set up and ready to go It's because they didn't they don't know how to do this part right here. This one little trick. So what you want to do is so by the way this This is a family here that I made so let me show you uh, Real quick uh, It's gonna be under annotations and it's gonna say Cover sheet, typical sheet, viewport arrow. There we go. Edit. So this should be what it looks like. This is actually the point. Um, this intersection here is is the point from which those drawings scale at. It's a really stupid thing Revit does, but once you know that, it's an easy thing to fix. So all you do is make sure to have. You see these arrows pointed here. That's the internal origin of the site. The way that you turn those on is under site internal origin and it's also where you can obviously turn it off and you want that these arrows you want these guys pointing just in the center of this box you know same with this with the sections here center of the box uh, this guy doesn't really matter this can move around on the sheet a little bit but we do want it to to stay inside the same spot here so what you want to do is you want to take and move this until it's pointing at the center point of the internal origin point right there and we want to do that for all of these drawings that we have here and it's a it's a little tedious but the thing is you only do this once and then it's all set up go from here okay so that way things scale correctly on our dashboard view but we also need to do this back here in the presentation. All of these, you want you want the arrow pointing there. Arrow pointing there. Just for speed here, I'm gonna, gonna kind of just really eyeball it. Arrow pointing there. Great. So then you have to obviously go back and turn the arrow off. No title. And this is another strange thing. People people uh, usually use uh, a title attached to this viewport. Problem is if the view moves around, if it scales or whatever, that title jumps around on the page too. So instead I opt to put the actual name of the drawing uh, as the drawing, the name that shows up in the template and not even put a title out here at all. Completely eliminates the, the need for uh, yeah for that family other than to point out the origin point so we can get it to scale the way we want. So I'm turning the title off on all of these. Okay, so let's see what happens when we change to an entirely different project now. Different scale. So this project's the same scale, um, and you can see it, it fits nicely on these sheets where we would like them. But I'm going to change it to uh, a project with a much smaller scale. Uh, so I think it's this one. And we want to change, I think this is 1 inch equals 80. And so remember, because this section, this is actually a section, and it's linked as the same view template as these sections, we only need to change this in one location, which is quite nice. So boom, those all snap in, and then we can go back to our presentation, and these drawings, we may need to sometimes you just have to adjust um, the locations of these. And you can set up a template that hides the ones that you don't want to see. Um, uh, so, but you can see how the drawing fits nicely on the sheet now. Um, you know, you might make a couple of adjustments here and there, but this is essentially how you create kind of an automatic environment where you can push multiple projects through and really only ever have to work on this one page uh, right here. So, yeah, hopefully this, this video was helpful. There's lots of other goodies, um, you know, that I have in the works. And I'm just trying to make it so that we have really, really good tools to, to do our job um, and really, at the end of the day, impress our bosses or 
become competent enough doing it our, on our own that we don't have to spend a whole bunch of time uh, gluing disconnected softwares and things together. We can come up with a process that's better than that. So um, thanks for your attention. I'll see you in the next video.